Now that we know the book of John reveals the promise of everlasting life here on earth, understand that your past life prepared you to pass through the narrow way, leading out of hell into the holy city. This is where the unforgiven cannot enter. Only those ordained to enter the kingdom of heaven inherit the key of life. Reading Revelation 22 verses 12 through 15 And behold I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gate into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Only in the book of John is Jesus described as being divine, he the Trinity, the Godhead, who came to earth as the Son of God within the blood of the baby Jesus, the Holy Ghost. It was only moments before the hours, before the arrest, the promise of the Holy Ghost would be released from the cross. The Father within the blood could traverse time to conceive into the womb of life from the tomb of death. The Comforter would come into the world a second time and prepare the way into the holy city. This is why the graves were opened at the resurrection when 520 saints entered Jerusalem showing themselves to the masses who then believed. This is what is happening in the end time. You are resurrected. Prepare the way for others. Today the Jews are of their father the devil who could not believe. This is what the new Jerusalem is, Australia, but is already devoured by the devil within its Jews. In the book of John, the Comforter was with God in the beginning. The Trinity is God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Ghost, existing simultaneously. I, as the Comforter, am also the Father, Son and Holy Ghost, who has been born to overturn the money changes in the temple, which is the earth. The book of John condemns the Jews, calling them, they are of their father the devil. Generally speaking, the entire Bible is and has been subject to the censorship of the Jews. All Christian churches are in reality an extension of the laws of Moses, which I as Jesus condemned. The God of Moses and the laws of Moses were invented in Babylon by the devil, Lucifer's demons. Led to find me, recognize my plea to wake you from the dead. This is why Pope Benedict the sixteenth announced Christ was back on March the twenty sixth, twenty thirteen, to align with the number of vowels in the three chapters revealed in the Comforter verses from John 14, John 15 and John 16. All three chapters contain A-E-I-O-U vowels totaling 25,557. Now the royal name is Golightly, its gematria is 115. The word Sabbath in the King James 1611 is written in lower case, like writing Jesus or Christ in lower case. The KJV found 115 times the word Sabbath. 
quoting Matthew 12:8, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. There it is 115 times. Go lightly, Gemma. So go lightly is 115. The word Sabbath is found 115. All verses have in it lower case because Jesus said he was the Sabbath. Again, go lightly, 115. Divide my name, 115, into the vowel count of 25,557 is 222.23478. is Isaiah 2222, and 3478 in the Greek concordance is Nazareth. Hebrew 3478 is Yisrael. From 8280 and 410, he will rule as God, Yisrael, a symbolical name of Jacob, also typically of his posterity, Israel. I am Israel and the Nazarene. Jacob was renamed Israel. Therefore, Israel is not a nation. It is a man. My rebirth hour is 2.22 a.m. I weigh 222 pounds as my ideal adult weight recorded on my BC driver's license. There are 222 verses with the word truth and 222 verses with the word wisdom, male and female. Reading Isaiah 22, verses 22 to 25, And the key of the house of David shall I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open, and none shall shut, and he shall shut, and none shall open. And I will fasten him as a nail, with a reference to the cross, in a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. And they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the issue, all vessels of small quantity from the vessels of cups, even to all the vessels of flagons. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall the nail, which is the cross, that is fastened in the sure place, be removed and be cut down and fall. And the burden that was upon it shall be cut off, for the Lord hath spoken. In the Greek concordance 22.22 from 21.9.8 is life. In the Hebrew Concordance, 22.22 is meaning to flow a pouring rain or water. So it's saying that life will flow like pouring rain. In the Hebrew Concordance, there it is again, 34.78, Israel. And the Greek Concordance, once more, 34.78, Nazareth. The altar to the Lord, the Great Pyramid, 5,813 pyramid inches high. So dividing the vowel count, 25,557, by 5,813 equals 4.396525. In the Greek concordance, 4396, a compound of 4253 and 5346, a foreteller, prophet by analogy, an inspired speaker by extension, a poet, a prophet. In the Strong's Concordance, the advanced meaning for 396 is in Greek writings an interpreter of oracles or other hidden things, or one who moved by the Spirit of God and hence his organ or spokesman, solemnly declares to men what has been received 
by inspiration, especially concerning future events, and in particular such as relate to the cause and kingdom of God and to human salvation. The Old Testament prophets having foretold the kingdom, deeds and death of Jesus the Messiah, and then it goes on, of John the Baptist, the herald of Jesus the Messiah, and then the illustrious prophet the Jews expected before the advent of the Messiah. It is also the Messiah, and then lastly, Christian inspired foretelling future events like Acts 11 verse 27. Quoting Acts 11, 27 and 28, And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Jesus speaking from John 5.37 And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you for whom he hath sent him ye believe not. Now straight away as discussed the Gospel of John differs from the other Gospels quoting John 6.46, clearly saying, concerning the declarations of the invented Moses, his yapping and to God and talking to him, John 6.46, quoting, Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verse 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. And then verse 48, I am that bread of life. So Jesus denied that the Father spoke to anyone. John 1.18, with John the Baptist speaking, saying, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Again, reiterating from the previous slide. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him ye believe not. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Continuing in John 14.7 If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. 14.9 Jesus says unto him Have I been so long time with you and yet hast thou not known me Philip he that hath seen me hath seen the Father and how sayest thou then show us the Father believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me the words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself but the Father that dwelleth in me he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the very works sake. And then John 15:23, He that hateth me hateth my Father also. Verse 24 If I had not done among them the works which none other man did they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. The important point is, John is the only gospel that proclaims the divinity of Jesus and talks of the comforter. Herein is the most important point. The Old Testament comforter was what the Old Testament writers looked for. None was found. But then Jesus comes, 
dies on the cross and then personally resurrects. Unexpectedly, not predicted by the prophets, the graves are opened. But as Jesus, I assured my apostles and disciples who were the women, just before the crucifixion, I and the Father, the Holy Ghost, would send the Comforter. Not mentioning the graves would be opened, freeing the Old Testament saints. But as the resurrection occurred, 520 saints came back to preach to the masses in Jerusalem. But the Comforter was the risen Jesus. But the demonstration of their resurrection was a sign that when the world is once again devoured by the Jews, hell would restrain you. When? Now. The end time. My sepulchre could not contain me. The key was the unselfish cross. Therefore, to escape your sepulchre and enter the holy city, you must take up your cross and follow me, which I said before I went to the cross. Your body is your tomb. Now Paul in the epistles dominates all churches and teaches the masses. No need to take up your cross. Jesus paid for your sins. You are saved by grace. Quoting Matthew 10:5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. Then in Acts 15.11, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Verse 12, Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. It is in John chapters 14, 15 and 16. The Holy Ghost, God himself, will come. Then the truth will set you free, opening your sepulchre, trapping your soul within. Why then is the former comforter no longer opening the graves. It's because all churches are of their father the devil, devil, via Paul, the false apostle, all being supporters of the Torah of the Khazarian fake Jews dominated by the Zionist demons in all Western nations. 666. Six, six. Reiterating, the important point is John is the only gospel that proclaims the divinity of Jesus and talks of the Comforter. Once more, so that you really understand this, the Old Testament Comforter was what the Old Testament writers looked for. None was found. But then Jesus comes and personally resurrects and the graves are opened. Yet Jesus then assures us later in John chapters 14, 15 and 16 the Holy Ghost, God himself, will come. Then the truth will set you free opening your sepulchre which is trapping your soul within. So this is all happening today. Your sepulchre is your body, it's your grave. Your tra soul has been trapped within your body because of the false teachings that have abounded literally since the cross. Therefore the Khazarian fake Jews are in Palestine butchering Palestinians at will, are tr still trying to take the promised lands that Moses in the Old Testament revealed by the Babylonian myth. The God of Moses gave it to the Jews at all. So this is why today God is with us. The Comforter is here to do the same for you. The truth of John tells us the Comforter had come for the Old Testament 
Then the false Jews forbid Christ starting immediately after the resurrection and is to this day forbidding Christ. The protocol of the learned elders of Zion number 14 we shall forbid Christ. Jesus on the cross released the Father from within his blood. Then at the resurrection God opened the tomb and the graves of the saints that had gone before. These are the Old Testament saints. This is why it is not continuous today because the Babylonian Jews took over the church and later all churches and now all governments. Again, this is revision from our previous uploads the New Testament Comforter, the vowel count for the three chapters of John 14, 15 and 16. The A-E-I-O-U. You can go through this as revision. Again, the number, 25,557 when counted as days, added to my conception date, which was April the 6th, 1943, and it lands on March the 26th, 2013. On that date, Pope Benedict the 16th announced to the world he had met the Christ who is the face of the Shroud of Turin. Announced in his apostolic letter, he called in Christum Credent. The idiot Francis had met Benedict for 45 minutes on March 23, 2013. And of course he told Benedict XVI he did not believe. So he becomes the Antichrist. Again, this is the how, so that you can do it yourself. Okay, so now that we have proven the number count of the vowels, 25557, added to April 6, 1943, aligns with March the 26, 2013, the uploading to the internet of In Christum Credent. Now the verses with the word comforter, this is, uh, there are seven verses in total, three from the Old Testament and the four of the New Testament that we've been talking about. So let's look closely at the numbers of the chapter and verses. You've got Ecclesiastes 4.1, Lamentations 1 9 and Lamentations 1 16. Then over to John 14 16, 14 26, John 15 26, and John 16 7. So you add all of the verse numbers, they total 67.54. Now 6754 is the area of the Shroud of Turin. The larger cloth, remember the shroud is two pieces, but the larger cloth contains the image, of course. It's 39.5 inches wide by the length of 171 inches. So the exact area is 6,754.5 square inches. Now in the Hebrew Concordance, 6754 is telling you what it is. The larger cloth is the image. It is the ghost, the phantom, the soul. So it's a photograph of the soul that was contained within the blood of Jesus. But of course, the soul that was walking around in the body of Jesus was the Father. That's why the image is that of the Father. And the point five, the five in the Greek concordance is Abba, Father. So the cloth is telling you in its dimensions the image of the Father, the Holy Ghost. Alright, now here we go with the references to the Sabbath, which totals 115 references, which just happens to be coincidentally not uh, the gematria for the royal name go lightly. Now all of the verses containing the word Sabbath have it in lowercase because Jesus said he was the Sabbath. Here it is again. We've already done this. The vowel count of the New Testament. Comforter, 
verses, there are four of them found within the three chapters of John, chapters number 14, 15 and 16. So this is the counting of all of the values in those three chapters. Divided by the Galilean name value of 115, again 22, two, rather 222.23478. This is Isaiah 22, 22, the key of the house of David, and 3478 in the Greek concordance is Nazareth. In the Hebrew concordance, 3478 is Israel. Now, Yah is saying, I am Israel and the Nazarene. So this is why there are 5,700 New Testament copies. Overall, they took the Essene Judah, British Jesus, and turned him into a circumcised Middle Eastern Jew, when in fact he condemns the Jews as being of the devil. Saul became Paul, who says, no need to take up your cross and follow Jesus. You can sit back and do nothing. Jesus did it all for you. Sit back, relax, do nothing, because you're saved by grace. The Babylonian religion has cut you off like the saints of the Old Testament who had no comforter. Then Jesus resurrected, opened the graves and off to heaven they went. Today is the Muslim and Daniel last days, the resurrection, we are already in it. But this time you must bury the Jews' religion because narrow is the way, quoting Matthew 7:14, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Then the admonition, in the next verse, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now this is the straight gate, my teachings today. It is a narrow way, and indeed of seven billion souls on the planet, how many of you have entered in? There are very few. The false prophets are all of the teachers, priests, pastors, evangelicals, ministers, reverends, etc. of all the Solomon 666 churches, teaching error and more concerned about the tithe than the truth. The ravening wolves who remain today are involved in the rape and murder of small children, Jewish ritual murder, which has been going on since before the cross. The image of the Shroud of Turin is that of Yahweh Jesus, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, recognised and announced to the world through the apostolic letter he wrote for the world Benedict knew that he was taking his life into his hands in Christum Credent the image of the Shroud of Turin Yahweh Jesus Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall announced March the 26th 2013 He is the comforter.